Okay, so we continue with um, our um, module. We're in um, this afternoon. We're going to uh, focus on what we refer to as inverse hyperbolic functions. And um, since hy uh, the hyperbolic functions are constructed uh, using exponential functions, we expect that their uh, inverses can be written in terms of um, logarithms. So um, in the following... Um, well, in fact, um, the following theorems that we have here would actually uh, hold. So, uh, we consider the following theorems. That is, the inverse hyperbolic uh, sine of x is uh, equal to the ln of the quantity of x plus the square root of x squared plus 1. And then we also have the inverse uh, hyperbolic cosine of x is equal to ln of uh, the quantity of x plus the square root of x squared minus 1. And then we also have the inverse hyperbolic tangent of x is equal to one half of ln. Okay, ta um, of um, we have open parenthesis one plus x all over one minus x. And then we also have the inverse cotangent um, of x, or this is the inverse hyperbolic cotangent of x, and that is equal to one half ln of x plus one all over x minus one. And then we also consider the inverse hyperbolic secant of x is equal to ln of the quantity of 1 plus the square root of 1 minus x squared all over x. And we also have the inverse hyperbolic cosecant of x is equal to ln of the quantity of 1 over x plus the square root of 1 plus x squared all over the absolute value of x. So let us make use of the following theorems to consider the following uh, example. So let us uh, take, uh, for example, uh, we have the inverse um, hyperbolic secant of 1. Okay, so uh, considering um, this uh, theorem number 5, the inverse hyperbolic secant of x is equal to uh, the ln okay, of 1 okay, plus the square root of 1 minus, since our x is equal to 1, this will be replaced by 1. So we will have 1 squared all over 1. Okay, so simplifying this, we will have, this is uh, 1 minus 1, that's 0. So 1 plus the square root of 0 is 1, all over 1. That will give us ln of 1. And ln of 1, we all know that it will be equal to uh, 0. Okay, so the inverse hyperbolic secant of 1 is equal to uh, 0. Okay, so again, let's consider another example. Let's take, for example, the inverse hyperbolic cotangent of uh, 5 over 4. Let's evaluate this using our theorem number 4. That is the inverse hyperbolic cotangent of x is equal to 1 half of ln of x plus 1 all over x minus 1. So making use of this, that will be equal to wherein x is equal to 5 over 4. So we will have 1 half of the ln of the quantity. We have 5 over 4. Okay, so this x here will be replaced by 5 over 4 plus 1 all over, okay, that is 5 over 4, okay, minus 1. Okay, so simplifying this, this will give us 1 half of uh, ln of 5 over 4 plus 1, that will give us 9 over 4, okay, over 5 over 4 minus 1, that will yield 1 fourth. Okay, you can verify the values that we have here. So simplifying this, this will be 1 half of the ln of 9 over 4 all, all over 1 over 4. So the denominator of 4 will be eliminated, that will yield 9. Okay, so 1 half ln of 9, that will be equal to ln of going back to the properties of natural logarithm. So this 1 half here becomes the exponent of 9. So that means to say, this is 9 raised to the 1 half. And uh, what is 9 raised to the 1 half? That will be the square root of 9, and that will give us 3. Okay, so I hope um, this is uh, understood. Okay, so here, uh, we will proceed with derivatives of um, inverse hyperbolic functions, and we will find that the derivative of each inverse hyperbolic function actually resembles that of a corresponding inverse circular function. So we will consider the following uh, theorems pertaining to uh, the derivatives of inverse uh, hyperbolic uh, functions. And let's apply these theorems to find the derivative of, let us take um, example number one, 
that is derivative of the inverse hyperbolic sine of 1 minus x. Okay? So, um, with reference to our uh, theorems here at the right, the derivative of the inverse hyperbolic uh, sine of uh, x is given to be 1 over the square root of x squared plus 1. Okay, so whatever is our x here, it's, it's going to be raised to the power of 2 plus 1. So in this example, what we have here is 1 minus x. Okay, so to find the derivative of this given inverse hyperbolic function, again, we are going to apply um, our concept on a chain rule. Okay, so to find the derivative of this, let us denote it by dy over dx, or that's the derivative of this function with respect to x. And what we need to do first is to get the derivative of the inverse hyperbolic sine, which is equivalent to what we have here in this theorem. And then by the chain rule, we have to get the derivative of 1 minus x. Okay, so let's do that. So the derivative of the inverse hyperbolic sine is given to be, that is 1 over the square root of x squared. So mean to say whatever we have here will be raised to the power of 2. And that is 1 minus x quantity raised to the power of 2. So let me extend this one. And that is plus 1. Okay? And then by our chain rule, we have to multiply this by the derivative of 1 minus x. And the derivative of 1 minus x is equal to negative 1. Okay? So simplifying this, we will have negative 1 all over okay you can actually expand this one okay or you can just retain it and retaining that we will have that is the quantity of 1 minus x uh, squared plus 1 okay so this is the derivative of the inverse hyperbolic sine of 1 minus uh, x so i hope um this is uh, clear let's have um another example okay in um our uh, next uh, video Okay, for our uh, second example, that is, we would want to find the derivative of the logarithm of the inverse hyperbolic cosine of 2x in the base 10. Okay, so um, what we need to do is we need to recall, okay, let me indicate it here. So we uh, have to recall how to find the derivative of the logarithm of x in the base a. Okay, so this is um, one of the theorems that we have encountered in finding the derivative involving logarithmic functions. And recalling, this will be equal to 1 over x ln of whatever base that we have there. Okay, which is exactly what we have here. That is, we are looking for the logarithm of this in the base 10. Okay, so that means to say, to find the derivative dy over dx, that means we have to get the derivative of the logarithm or the entire logarithm and then by the chain rule we get the derivative of this times the derivative of this one okay let's do that so in this case uh, by using this theorem to find the derivative of the logarithmic function in the base 10 this will yield 1 all over okay that is our x is this entire expression that is the inverse hyperbolic cosine of a 2x and then we multiply it by the ln of our base. Our base here is 10. Okay? We multiply it by the derivative of this. And recall the derivative of the hyperbolic or the inverse hyperbolic cosine is given to be 1 over the square root of x squared minus 1. And that is exactly what we will have here. That is, it will be equal to 1 over okay, the square root of Okay, so our expression here is 2x. We're going to raise everything here to the power of 2. So it will give us 4x squared. That's because quantity 2x raised to the power of 2 will give us 4x squared. Okay, and then we have minus 1. Okay, but we're not yet done. That's because by chain rule, we have to get the derivative of 2x. And the derivative of 2x is equal to 2. Okay, simplifying this further, okay, just to come up with a single expression, we will have that's 1 times 1 times 2, that will give us 2 all over, okay, that is the inverse hyperbolic cosine of 2x times the ln of 10, okay, uh, times the square root of 4x squared minus 1. So this will be our final answer, okay, so I hope um, everything is clear.